Good morning, family and friends, and welcome to this great day. It's our day, and we are great, also grateful to be here today. So, I welcome you to this live broadcast where we feel free to share knowledge. We always seek and spread knowledge without fear or favor, and we will never faint, we will never give up. If you can see the volume of people who are still believing trash, there's no reason for you to give up. Don't give up. What's up, bro? How are you doing? You all are welcome. All right, so I want to make this. I'm supposed to go to bed. I just come back from work, but I said, let me drop this. Because last year, or 31st December, also to 1st January 2019, I, I, I made a I made a, video, a live video like this and asked some people, those who still believe in Titan and all that, to give God one more year to see if Titan work or if the blessing or the prophecy they give them for the crossover night it work. If it didn't work at the end of the year, you need to forget about God, forget about Jesus, forget about religion, forget all that. And you can, as you can see. You did not see the blessings of God tighten and giving offering. All that you have been doing, all that activities, you are still struggling. God did not bless you in the year 2019 as they promised you with Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and other places in the Bible, the good health and all that. Some of you buried somebody in your family this year. Some of you went on borrowing money this year. I mean, last year, not this year. This is 2020 now. So 2019. So let me be mentioning the number of the year so you don't say I'm talking about this year. No, I'm talking about 2019. So 31st December 2018, I asked those who believe in God, who believe God can do whatever they promised them, to watch it. And I use Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9 as an example, which I will also read again this morning to show us the uselessness of God. That's why I titled this, See the Uselessness of God. You need to see it. Those of us that are telling you that there is no God or God Almighty does not exist or Jesus is, uh, is calm or that Jesus never existed is because we have seen the uselessness of God, the uselessness of Jesus. They don't exist. We are not afraid of God's wrath. We are not afraid of God's cause. We are not afraid of anything that God can do. No. Because of what we know. We know the truth. Not just the truth, but factual truth. We don't have religious truth. We don't have political truth. We don't have individual truth. Like to impose it on other people. No, we have factual truth. Which you also can verify. So in Luke... Luke chapter 13. Let me read it to see why you should cut down that tree of God, that tree of Jesus, that tree of religion, that tree of faith, that tree of belief, that tree of, oh, I claim it in Jesus' name. You need to cut down that tree out of your life. Hear what he says. Avonka, 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 Avonka. Okay. About the parable, the, the parable of the barren fig tree. So here what is he said, he also spoke this parable that Jesus, a certain man had a fig a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The volume went up. I didn't do that. <laughs> a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to his keeper, to the keeper of his vineyard, "Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground?" But he answered and said to him, "Sir." Let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. 
You have lived from January to December 2019. You have done all the fasting. You have done all the tightening. You have done all the off giving. You have done everything they ask you to do in the name of God. Yet see your life. Your life is not better than the life of those who don't believe in that you are God. Life of those who have not done any of those things you have done. Is it not time for you to cut it down? It is the parable you are Jesus or the one you call the Savior of the world even gave in the Bible. How many since you are born you have been believing in this God? In 2019, I ask you to give that God one more year to see if that barrenness of God will be, will be cured in your life and you can see God is useless. He did not cure it. Is it not time for you to cut it down? He said, you should cut it down. He said, then you can cut it down. You can cut it down. You can cut God down in your life. You can cut Jesus down in your life. You can cut religion down in your life. You can cut fear down in your life. You can cut faith down in your life. You have the power to do that. At work yesterday, which leads to today. So from last year to this year. So last year, my co-worker from Nigeria, she, he used to work in a bank in Lagos. So he said something. He said that, um, oh, I remember this song. He said, what song? I said, um, a bank officer in our bank used to sing it every morning for morning prayer. You know, they pray in the morning before they start working. I don't know the, the purpose of their praying. If you come to work, work. If your prayer work, you won't be working. You won't be that place working. Your prayer should help you get whatever you need in your house. So he said, he used to sing, giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. Giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns. This person was a serious Christian. So they posted him, they transferred him to Port Harcourt. That was in Lagos. So they transferred him now in Port Harcourt. So he was making big money. He was a redeemed church member. So he went and gave, gave testimony. And they printed it in their magazine that he's making millions. You know, God has been good to him. He's been making it millions. So the Amen man in Lagos, somebody showed him the magazine, the testimony of this guy. He's not even making up to what this guy is making. And he's his boss, his senior, his, his salary is more than this man. Who is giving glory to the Lord? He reigns. Nonsense. Then they carried out investigation. He didn't know. They carried out investigation. He was right. He was making millions. But he was doing it wrongly. He was doing some magu magu business, some dubious business with people. Because that's the only way you can make it. You can't make it with a prayer in Jesus' name or with being nice. No, you have to be mean. You have to do some dirty stuff. If you want to be rich, yes, it is not easy to be rich. You think it's easy, go try. <laughs> so that's how that guy got arrested and he went to jail. So he ruined his bank career with a testimony in the church. That's why I keep telling you, stop being deceived by those testimonies. Don't believe them. There's no such thing as testimony of the Lord's doing. It is the testimony of man's doing, people's doing. People are the ones that are doing that. God cannot do anything. God cannot put money in your bank account. God cannot give you favor to make money more than you're supposed to be making. No way. God cannot give you favor to make more money than your colleagues, people that are of the same rank with you. Or you must be doing something to make more than them. And that thing must be wrong. Because if it's right, all of you in the same rank, in the same position, supposed to be earning equal. Equal pay. So that's the person now, just as you will hear many people give testimony, or like, okay, in Nigeria, they already, or many people giving testimony in their churches, or during their crossover night and all that, that God bless them. You know, so why is it always they set up people to give testimony? Is to make you, those people that, that, that don't have to, okay, I want to sow seed to her. I want to, I want to do this. What must I do? Because when you put yourself in the position of what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be free? What must I do to get out of this? And you are depending on that man of God to tell you that. 
you are you are you are a victim to that man of God. You are vulnerable. He will be. He can say anything, and you'll be nodding your head. You believe, believe because they say if you don't believe, it won't happen. So you believe. So I am calling your attention to see the uselessness of God. How about those people that are, that cost us? in the year 2019 some of them say we die in july some of them say some sickness or disease will come to show that i am mocking their god you know i mock god every day i mock god every morning i mock god every afternoon i mock god every night because i know that god is bow the god you worship is bow the god you believe in is bow the god you fear is bow the God you cannot see is bad. That God cannot pay attention to you. That God cannot answer your prayer. And that God cannot speak to you. Because that God does not exist. See the uselessness of God, my people. Open your eyes from January 2019 to December 2019. See you are alive. See your family. Are you not the one that walked from January to December to earn that money? Are you not the one that made that money? Are you not the one that make that promotion possible by your good works or by your connections? Tell yourself the truth. Can't you see the, use, the, the uselessness of God? It is written all over you. Because if that God exists, you wouldn't have went through what you went through in 2019. That God would have prevented it. In the book of Jeremiah, promising his children what? Peace and prosperity. Do you have peace and prosperity? Until you have peace and prosperity, you, that God is useless. Oh, you say, God, prosper me. Do you have peace? Especially those of you living in Nigeria. You, there's a good contrast and make some money, but you don't have peace. You still have to move with armed men. You don't have peace. When you have peace, you don't need any security men around you to keep you safe. No way, because you're supposed to have peace. The law is supposed to be the one watching over you. You don't supposed to be afraid of criminals. You don't supposed to be afraid of assassins. You don't supposed to be afraid of losing your life. In fact, you're supposed to be happy to lose your life so you can go and meet Jesus in heaven and sit there in the room where he said he prepared for you. And I am encouraging you because I know that that God does not exist. Yeah, Jehovah does not exist. Allah does not exist. Yahweh does not exist. Buddha or whatever God you worship that cannot do anything by himself or by herself, but you have to, you have to use human being to do whatever. That God does not exist. The person you are really serving is the person you see uh, as the one running the, the, that ministry or running that church. The man of God, the woman of God, you are respecting and that, that's the real God that is there. There is no almighty God in heaven or in the sky or anywhere. No, when you say you are serving the living God, the living God is your pastor. The living God is your bishop. The living God is your pope. The living God is your man of God or woman of God. It's not, there's no almighty God anywhere that is watching all of us, that we judge all of us. No way. We have our brain to, to judge one another. They ask you, do not judge, but they said, forgive one another, pray for one another. Why should I pray for, for you, but I cannot judge you? Why should I forgive you, but I cannot judge you? See the foolishness of God and trash all their prophecies that are given you in the name of this God. For you to prove any prophecy is wrong, just ask them, demand for a date. They tell you, God will bless you this year, 2020. Ask them to give you the date. Don't give them your money until they give you a date. Don't give them your dime until they give you a date. And tell them you will double whatever money you want. If that time comes to pass on that date, they cannot give you a date, none of them. And they say that servants of God. Servants of God don't supposed to be ignorant of the date. God will do anything. God reveal his things to his servants, the prophets, according to Deuteronomy 22, uh, I think 22, 20, 29, 29, or something like that. Or he said that the secret things belongs to God, right? So if it is secret, when God will walk, at least it belongs to him, he can reveal it to his servants, the prophet. Then somewhere in the Bible, he said, the Lord God does nothing except he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. But you know, he does not reveal anything. You can prove their prophecies are lies by demanding for date. That's why their Bible does not have date. Because it's a lie. It's a work of fiction. 
their Quran, their Torah. It does not have date because if they put date, you can trace it back and find out the truth. So they did not put the date to hide the lies. That's why your Bible does not have date. Once upon a time or in the beginning, it's not a date. Trash their prophecies. Trash their prayers. No. Their prayer does not work. If, if prayer works, God will answer your prayers. And if God answers your prayer, you don't need any other person to pray for you. If you believe in God, that God created you and is your father, why are you going to somebody else to pray for you? You don't need anyone to pray for you. If God exists, God will answer your prayer directly. A God that cannot answer your prayer because of your sin or because of your wicked weakness, that God is useless. That means your sin is more powerful than that God. Your sin is greater than God. Your weakness is greater than God. Trash their promises. All the promises that have, that have been given to you, they are all fake. That's why your life remains the same. You are the one that has been changing your life, changing your clothes, doing everything. You are the one that has been working. It is not the doing of the Lord. It is not by the grace of God. It is not by the mercy of God. It is not by the Spirit of God. It is by your own strength, your own might, your own will, your own power. That's how you get to where you are today. You are the one that can change your situation. And your fellow human being can help you to change your situation. But God cannot help you. God cannot change anything around you. See, many people believe in every year they keep saying God will provide. Every time, God will provide. God is not providing for anyone. You have seen some people that started having children without having means of, means of support or something they are doing that, that, that they earn money from. But they believe God will provide. It's God that trains children. No, God doesn't train any children. You, are, you, the parents, are the ones that are supposed to train your children. Not any God. God cannot help you to train your children. God does not give children, and God does not take care of children. How do you expect God that doesn't give children to take care of your children? You have sex with your partner to have those children. So you're supposed to work also together to take care of those children. It's not God. God does not provide anything. They give you the story of Abraham wanted to kill his son. God said no, and God provided the ram. But you have been giving your money. God have not said no, and God provided the ram. You have been giving your life to that sacrifice, to that service. God have not said no. Well, well, to let me let me bring this ram. Let me bring this goat. Let me bring this chicken. They are taking your money. God never said okay. Wait, keep your money. I, let me give my servant money now. You don't need to spend your money. Every year God will provide. God is not providing anything. See the uselessness of God in your family. You can see the foolishness of God in your life and in your family. You can see the weakness of God in your life and in your family. You can see the worthlessness of God in your life and in your family. Tell yourself the truth and shame God. Tell yourself the truth and shame Jesus. Tell yourself the truth and shame religion. It is time you wake up and stop living this useless life by faith in useless God. Where is the blessing of tithes and offerings? They tell you in the Bible in the year 2019. You're supposed to be richer for them, all the non titers Everyone that doesn't go to church, everyone that doesn't give us an offering, you're supposed to be richer than them. But as you can see, a believer is not the richest man in the world. As you can see, Christians are not the richest people in the world. Titans are not the richest people in the world. See the uselessness of God. See the foolishness of God. See the weakness of God. And tell yourself the truth. You ought to be better. You ought to be healthier than those that don't believe in your God. You ought to be healthier. Tell me a, show me a believer that is at my age and look better than me and have healthier life than me. Show me one. You cannot. Bring them. <laughs> if you know my age, I don't look. They, they always say that I was there, man. You don't look your age. Of course, I don't because nothing bothers me anymore. I am no more a Christian. I'm no more a believer. I'm not living in fear. You ought to be better, doing better than those that don't believe in your God. The one year is over. The one year challenge is over. 
your God failed. Your God did not show his faithfulness to you. You keep saying, God is faithful. I will see the faithfulness that there's no certain as faithfulness of God. All you will see is the uselessness of God. God is not faithful. God is useless. It is time you cut it down. Call down faith. Cut down beliefs. Call down God. Call down Jesus. Call down heaven and hell. Call down all this religious nonsense. Call them down. Call down all this religious gathering, all this religious meeting. You are wasting your time and your money attending those meetings, being in those gatherings. That's where they brainwash you the more. That's where they confuse you the more. When you hear those testimonies, when you hear those prophecies, and you are hearing on top of your noise, of your voice, amen, making noise. Because you are empty. And that God is empty. Nothing will happen. Nothing happens. It is time you're caught down going to church. I have not been to church for many years now. I see how better my life is. I save more money too. I'm no longer worried about buying new clothes to go to church or buying new shoes to look hard. And I say, and I say I'm going to worship God. I save myself a lot of money. I spend my money as I want. No man, no, man, no God can cost my money. No, no. No God can stop me from making money. For, uh, the, for the God of Christianity to stop me from making money, he has to kill all his children who are Christians. He has to kill all of them. He can't stop me. Understand that that God you worshipped in 2019 is useless. And this is 2020. You want to continue with that same shit? Keep doing the same thing and expecting different results? No way. You want God to reward you? Reward you for what? God is not rewarding you anything because that God does not exist. It is time you wake up, my people, and stop serving the dead white man hang on the cross. You believe the white man is your Lord and Savior. Have you seen the white people believing that a black man is their Lord and Savior? No matter how great that black man it was in history, you can never see black, white people, white people honoring that black man as their Lord and Savior. Even if that black man saved their life, literally, in reality, they put it aside. But they see black people because they force us to embrace white dead man they call Jesus on the cross. Every time you go to church, you are promoting white supremacy. Every time you go to church, you are promoting white supremacy. I mean, white superiority. Every time you go to church, you are promoting black inferiority. It is time you caught church going down. They make you become a beggar. You are praying. Yes, praying is form of begging. You are begging. A slave, keep begging. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Which Lord are you talking about? The Lord is good. You are talking about slave master. Lord means owner. Owner, slave owner. That's what slaves pray to their owner. Slaves pray to the slave owner. Give us this day our daily bread. Protect us. Clothe us. Do this. Give us strength. It is time you cut down all those church service. All that you are worshiping the, your oppressor when you go to church, when you go to mosque as an African, you are worshiping your oppressor. You are honoring your oppressor against your own ancestors whom they killed. I made video earlier when I was going to work. I said, resist them. Our ancestors resisted slavery. But those they forced to embrace it, pass it down to us. And today, we are not even ashamed to say a white man is our Lord and Savior. And these white men, I mean, white people are the same people that make life miserable for us. Even to date, your Savior and your oppressors look alike. And you don't look like them. And you think you know what you are doing. It is time. This is uh, 2020. Will you continue with that bullshit? With that Jesus Christ bullshit? With that God bullshit? With that Bible bullshit? It's time you wake up and trust them. 
it is time you trash white supremacy. It is time you trash white uh, superiority. It is time you care about your own race, Africans. It is time you care about yourself. You all know one apology. Care about your race. When you are, when I'm talking about caring about your race, I'm talking about taking care, caring about yourself. When you take care of yourself, you will care about your race because you are one with your race. If your race are slaves, you are slave. If your race are free, you are free. So no matter how you claim, oh, it doesn't concern you, it concerns you. You are part of your race. You see some uh, some blacks that betray their their own race and run to white race, right? At the end, white people show them that listen, you are lesser than us. They treat and they say, "Oh, because I'm black, that's why you are treating me like this." Of course, you knew that before you joined them, but you were stupid. You think you are people who are kicking against white supremacy. We are wrong. You say, oh, no, you are promoting uh, hate. You are promoting uh, violence. You are promoting racism. No, there's nothing bad about being a racist. Only don't use your own race against other race, but value your race. Respect your race. Don't trust your race before other race. Put your race, your race above other race because that's where they put themselves and put you under. It is time you come from under the table and climb over their head and show them that, listen, I care about my people more than whatever you have to offer. And those of you that cost us in the year 2019, in the name of your God, in the name of Jesus, and you see that your God is useless, your Jesus is useless, we are still here, waxing strong and doing our thing. Is it not time for you to have a rethink? If you have those people that curse you in 2019 because you tell them there is no God or there is no Jesus, I want you to comment them here for them to see, or if there is any way you can make them to see this video, let them see it to see the uselessness of their God. Jehovah is useless. Allah is useless. Yahweh is useless. Jesus is useless. Mary is useless. Angels of God, they are useless. Satan is useless. Devil is useless. Demons are useless. Whatever it is you call invisible savior, invisible supreme being, whatever name it bears, Chukwokka Biyama, or Elerumadu, or whatever the name of that God, but that God cannot come in reality and help you and your family, that God is useless. It is time you wake up and trust them and live your life the best way you can because you can and you will peace mm.